Tesla just announced how they're going to be fixing one of the biggest complaints of the supercharger network. So a lot of this all started when they opened up the NAC standard for everybody. There was likely some delays with this program for sure because of uh, some charging team uh, remanagement. But the main issue is that there's a lot of different EVs on the road, whether it be Hyundai or Kia or Porsche or Lucid, that are all based on higher voltage architectures. And even as they got access to the supercharger network via an adapter, because the existing supercharger infrastructure was built for 400 and 500 volt vehicles. They didn't scale all that well up to the 800 or sometimes over 900 volt architectures that other EVs support. That's why the only way to get peak charging speeds on a Lucid Air was at Electrify America, and that's why Hyundai and Kia vehicles were kind of capped at around 99 kilowatts when charging at V3 and even V4 superchargers, because even the newish looking super chargers were just v4 dispensers they were not v4 cabinets and without getting too into the weeds on the nitty-gritty details there's basically two major components to tesla's supercharging stations the cabinets which are the back end infrastructure these kind of tall white boxes that you'll see at most charging stations versus the dispensers which are mainly just those stalls that your car parks next to and have the cable and they're in charge of keeping that cable cool and of course getting the power to the vehicle once it's parked but even those V4 superchargers, of course, were just V4 dispensers. The back end was still the V3 cabinet, but officially today, Tesla has unveiled and announced the V4 cabinet, which it's cool to see them actually use the same vocabulary that the online community has been referring to them as. In the past, Tesla did not really iterate that there's a difference between the two. Now they are, and the specs are actually better than we realized with the V4 cabinet. So even though it's a smaller form factor than the V3 cabinet, it can output to eight stalls simultaneously, which is twice as many stalls as the outgoing V3 cabinet. And of course, these cabinets are optimized for those higher voltage vehicles too, which includes the Cybertruck, by the way. And that's probably the most exciting, impressive tech specy upgrade is that they're showing now on camera, at least, that the Cybertruck will get up to 500 kilowatts with these V4 cabinets, which are scheduled to start rolling out in 2025. So no current superchargers on the map, unfortunately, are supported this, but lots of other automakers, I think, are going to benefit from this as well. It means that a Lucid Air should be able to achieve their peak speeds if you're at a supercharger with V4 cabinets. Same thing with the Hyundai and Kia vehicles as well. I'm a little bit confused by their verbiage, though, because they said that these new cabinets will allow the Cybertruck to supercharge 30% faster than what it's currently charging at, but most Cybertrucks, you know, are peaking at around 250 kilowatts. 30% more than that would be more like 330 kilowatts watts not 500 so i hope tesla's not clickbaiting us with some kind of like yes technically these cabinets will support up to 500 kilowatts for cars and we just needed to show a vehicle charging at 500 kilowatts so they threw it on the cybertruck even though maybe the cybertruck doesn't technically support it but that's absurdly quick much much faster really than any other pickup truck is charging on the market today and they show it in the video that translates to over 1300 miles per hour which is not even obtainable currently on today's re Refreshed Model 3 long range, super efficient, and can achieve 250 kilowatts, but that still peaks at around 1100 miles per hour, which makes the Cybertruck not just in current charging speeds, but also in miles per hour charging speeds, the fastest charging Tesla ever made, if these specs are actually true. And if that wasn't enough, they also went up to say that the V4 cabinet supports up to 1.2 megawatt charging speeds on vehicles like the Tesla Semi, which is interesting because, you know, we know the Tesla Semi is not using NACs. At least that's what they've told us previously. Right now it's using a proprietary plug, but Dan Priestley in charge of the Semi program has said that once they do volume manufacturing of the Semi, they're going to switch to the megawatt charging standard or MCS and that is not NACs. So I assume this means that they're using the same V4 cabinets on the back end as they start building out the mega charger network, which I'm very excited for. And there's rumors that they're going to be building out a megawatt charger line across the United States so that Tesla semis can get from Nevada all the way to Giga Texas without having to be hauled or use some kind of weird hybrid adapter and clog up a poor innocent little regular supercharger. So this benefits Tesla greatly of course knowing that the Cybertruck can charge that absurdly quick. I wouldn't be shocked at all if it does not hold that current for very long but yes the higher voltage architecture of not just Tesla's but all EVs allows for more efficient charging which means you don't have to dump as many amps in 
into the battery pack, but you can still achieve really, really good speeds, and that's why Lucid has been so passionate about higher voltage architectures. I just worry that it's not going to deploy fast enough. You know, in the past, Tesla has been known to roll out new hardware and new infrastructure pretty quickly, but with the Lucid Gravity supposedly launching within, like, the month, and Hyundai already building Ionic 5 vehicles with NAX built in, and the charge port is not in the optimum location, like, I'm so glad Tesla has designed the V4 cabinet. It sounds amazing, and the V4 dispensers should be great for having better cable reach and all that, but you need to deploy these things, like, fast. You need to start rolling these things out so that there's less and less people clogging up the V3 superchargers, and long term, I think a lot more people are going to be interested in buying the Cybertruck for towing if they know that the charging speed is going to be that good, because we all know your range gets cut in half, so even if you bought the range extender, you know, and got 450 miles of range with that thing, with the trailer, your truck is still going to be cut in half to like a 200 plus mile range, and then you're going to need pull-through stalls so that you're not having to unhook your trailer every time you stop and charge, and those charging sessions need to be quick, and hitting 500 kilowatts is certainly a step in the right direction, but again, these V4 cabinets aren't even rolling out until next year, so please, Tesla, Godspeed, like, roll these things out as quickly as you possibly can. The whole industry needs them, you guys need them, and I'm glad to see them finally publicly talking about how they're going to address all of the complaints about the slower speeds on the higher voltage vehicles, and it's honestly still mind-blowing to me that the Cybertruck is now going to be the fastest charging Tesla on the market. In fact, it's a shame the battery pack in it isn't even larger, because there's a chance now that in a Tesla lineup, like, competition of which vehicle can go across the country fast enough, the Cybertruck might win purely because of its insane charging speed. But what do you guys think of the V4 cabinets? Are you excited? Is it too little too late? Feel free to drop your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.